That's the first stage is attraction. And you could kill the attraction by pursuing him more than he pursues you. Um, second stage is when there's some something going on, then naturally, meaning that you think this might be the one, he's thinking about you, you might be the one, then, then that he'd be in a committed relationship with and explore further. Then you tend to shift into stage two where doubts come up. It's normal when you're thinking of getting in a committed relationship with someone to start having doubts. And for men at that point, it doesn't mean you can't pursue – the relationship's not going to go further. It just means he's going to have feel a little stress, and you're going to feel a little stress. You know, like, oh, well, gee, is this really the right person? One of you starts to feel this doubt. And the way men react to it is they become disconnected to their emotions – it's basically they start to withdraw a bit. They lose their attraction for a little bit. A woman starts to feel more emotional. She starts to feel a little more needy at that time. And she might pursue him and say at that moment, what's the matter? Where are we going? Let's talk about the relationship. She says that at times when she's doubting, it's the worst thing to say. Whenever you feel like you want to ask a guy, you know, where are we going? You know, let's talk mm-hmm. about the relationship. If that's the time to not talk about the relationship. It's to give him space, let him pull away for a little while while you do something to make yourself happy. And you ask yourself the question. Instead of the question is, you know, do you love me? Do you like me? Do you want to be in a relationship with me? You need to ask the question of yourself. Do I like him? Do I want to be in a relationship with him? That's the question, not what does he think. It's what do you think, what do you feel. But before you even get to that place, go do something that makes you happy. You know, this is you never want to come across or be in the situation where you depend on him for your complete level of happiness. And you've got to balance that with I have a life that makes me happy. He then pulls away. He, If you don't pursue him, he, spring, he springs back if you're the right person for him. And he will, he will he'll show his interest again. Maybe he doesn't call for a couple of weeks. Don't punish him. Don't slap his hands. Don't say, why didn't you call me? How could you do that? Even if you feel it, talk to a girlfriend about it. When he calls, say, oh, good, I was just thinking about you. You know, I've had such a good time this week. Let him always see you as a positive being uh, before you show the part of you that, that maybe gets upset about things, wants to ask for more or whatever. You want to start with this place of unconditional acceptance. With that, that that pulls him back in, pulls him back in, and then you have appreciation when he does the right things. So when you get through the doubting stage, then you get into the stage of commitment. And the challenge there, oh boy, are you com- challenged because that's when men become real lazy unless you do this, handle this right. He's like feeling mm-hmm. like, okay, now I've won the race, you know, now I can relax. I climbed the mountain, right. now I can <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> right. So it's, it's important at that point to make sure that you don't spend too much time together, that he's having to pursue you. Otherwise, he just kind of waits till Friday night and says, what do you want to do? What would you like to do? He sits around. He doesn't have the energy and motivation to please you anymore because he thinks he's done his job. That's where you really have to begin asking more, asking for more, and be careful not to give more than you're getting because if you give more than you're getting, you'll start to feel resentful. And when you feel resentful, you lose your ability to appreciate what he has to offer. You lose your ability to have unconditional acceptance and appreciation. And he loses his attraction for you. So that's the dance in stage three. Then you get to stage four where you begin to be more emotionally intimate, where you're no longer putting your best foot forward, but you're also sharing more about your vulnerable feelings. And I've written whole books on how to do that. But the art is... If you share things that are like frustration, disappointments, concerns, embarrassments, regrets, you know, um, painful moments that you've experienced in your life or in your relationship or at that time in your life, what you want to do is make sure to share the good and the bad. And when you share the bad, focus at least in the beginning stages, never sharing anything which rejects him, which he might feel criticized, he might feel rejected. But start out by sharing Things about your life, your work, uh, your frustrations at work, your disappointments, your concerns, your embarrassments, those kind of feelings. And just say to them, oh, I'm so glad to talk to you. I just want to talk about my day, what happened. And, you know, it it might sound like I'm asking for help, but really the biggest help I need is I just want you you to be a sounding board. I can just talk about this 
and then you talk about it for like six, seven minutes, then talk two or three minutes about how much, how good your job is, how much you love your job, appreciate talking to him, and go in for a hug. Uh, and he'll be one. He'll be amazing. This woman can be upset about something, and then she comes back, and she's so positive. Wow, that's an amazing woman, and she appreciates me for listening. I, I like this. I like this job, and I like this woman. So he bonds with you because he feels he's helped you, but he sees that you have the ability to be upset about things, but then come back to positive feelings. The part of you that's upset about things says that I am affected by things. I'm not this Superman that can do everything without feeling anything. But I'm a, I'm a vulnerable person. And you are a vulnerable person. So it's not to fake it. It's to be authentically who you are, but sharing with him the authentic female side of you, which is affected by things. And then, you know, it's not like you're asking for help to solve the problem. You just want to share how you feel, the tender feelings, and they don't have to be big, you know. If you if you suppress all the little feelings, then it has to be some big problem you have to talk about. But if you have big problems, you talk about that. But come from the place at least several times of talking about feelings, and see he can witness you going from negative feelings to positive feelings, and it's not about him, but he feels he's helped you. And in many of my books, I call that the Venus Talk, where women really go over to their female side and show some vulnerability. Boy, men don't forget it. They love it. They bond with you. But only if you if you shift from the negative to the positive. That's where they feel like, wow, I helped her to do that. Yeah, and I think this isn't always real intuitive either because I think so many of us as women, when we're dating a man, we want to have him be impressed with us and we want to come across as having everything all together all of the time. And I know in my work with women, I'm often asked about this whole vulnerability piece. And I think it's a little tricky, particularly for a lot of women, to be able to show that side of themselves. And I like what you've said here so much about this because I think what we're talking about here, both in being able to express our wants, our needs, to show our vulnerability, and allowing for that time and space for a man to step up and be a man, is that we're allowing more or less a sacred space for a relationship to develop and for a man to have that opportunity to step up, be the man that he chooses to be for you, and then for you to decide if he's the right man for you. And if we try to rush that process or we are afraid to ask for what we want or need or we're afraid of showing vulnerability, that sacred space often doesn't exist. Or another thing we do is we give too much too fast too soon. Wonderfully said. You know, I always love doing these <laughs> talks with you. I think you're absolutely brilliant in what you do. Oh, uh, thank you. That's just, so uh, kind. What a compliment from you, John. <laughs> you, you do such a good job. I mean, wow. So, you know, one of the phrases you use is the vulnerability, and I just want to add something to that, which is vulnerability is the ability to be influenced, the ability to be affected by someone. And we often only associate vulnerability with tears or frustration or concerns or worries. That's one aspect of vulnerability. The other aspect of vulnerability is is to be uh, to feel um, happy, to feel appreciative, to be delighted, to feel love. It's like, oh my gosh, you said that. Oh, you were so I'm so glad you're here. Oh my goodness. That was such a good movie. Oh, we had such a great walk. Oh, the flowers were beautiful. You know, all if this is the the positive side of the feminine vulnerability because vulnerability is I need you. And so therefore, if I don't get what I need, then there's some sense of loss. But if I do get what I need, there's this great rejoicing. There's being affected by things. And that's what makes women so attractive to men uh, because it becomes unattractive if it's only the negative side of it. But the positive side is what we, we become most attracted to and what builds our confidence. Then when she shows her vulnerability on the negative side, we can stand there and feel like oh, I'm here for you. But even with that, that's a new thing for men to learn how to listen even if he's being criticized or he feels like he's being given a message he's not good enough. So he, he can learn to do that, but first he has to learn to just listen to you being upset or bothered by things that don't have to do with him, and he begins to trust 
this process of femininity, which is talking about negative feelings, will lead you to feeling positive feelings. Most men instinctively do not understand that. And quite often, because women do instinctively or intuitively understand that, not all women, but many, they assume that when a man is upset, you want to get him to talk about his feelings, and he'll come back to positive feelings. But actually, when men talk about their feelings, their frustrations, their disappointments, and whatever, they go to their female side and makes a woman feel, in a sense, as the listener of that, more masculine. So you feel more like his mother over time. Or he begins mm-hmm. to feel like you're his mother. The sexual attraction goes away. The interest goes away. So it's really important that, you know, what's good for her is not necessarily good for him. What's good for her is to be able to share things. For him to be able to share, oh, you know, his his problems, his feelings about the problems and so forth. Don't go deeply into it as a woman. You know, you don't want to encourage that. I know every woman does because she feels if he does that, we'll be closer But actually, he'll feel weaker in your presence and lose interest. You feel closer to a man when you go into him, is what you think. But actually, you feel more close to a man when he goes into you. Him going into you means he listens. He's there for you. He understands you. He cares about you. He does things for you. You know, I'm being a little extreme here, but that's, that's what women really, to come back to femininity... That's your relationship with the romantic partner in your life. You can have friends, men who are friends. It can all be like, you know, we're like brothers and sisters. But when you want the romantic relationship, you have to realize what romance is, is woman receives, man gives. It's not woman gives and man receives. It's woman responds to what man gives. And so you would create these situations where where the female side can be nurtured more and his masculine side can be nurtured more because he feels successful. Yes, and as women we can even create these opportunities for him to feel successful and for him to have that opportunity to know that what he's providing is very satisfying and appreciated. And like you said, that helps foster these romantic feelings. And I just love that you brought out this other side of vulnerability that the vulnerability is not just being able to express our sorrow or our pain or our frustrations or those kinds of things that might be viewed as more negative emotions, but to show that natural feminine joy and our natural feminine emotions about things that please us or make us happy. And if a man's providing that, that's going to be a big win. We're going to feel good and he's going to feel good, right? Absolutely. That's the secret to this. And it's not its not only what he directly does for you or says to you, it's also, add to that, what he provides. If he brings, if you go for a walk in the garden, he, he, she says, let's go for a walk in the garden. He says, okay, and he drives you there or something, or he's with you. The fact that you're delighted by the garden, or you're delighted by the play, or you're delighted by the ocean, or you went swimming with him, whatever it is that you're doing that you're delighted by, he'll take that personally, like, I provided it. Yes, I created this beautiful day for you. <laughs> you know, a woman says, oh, such beautiful sky and blue skies, and man goes, yes, I brought that to you. So it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the woman's happiness is the key to it. 